Good afternoon, everyone. Um, hello and welcome to the Patent Literacy Symposium and this session um, that is entitled ECRI, Successful Implementation. My name is Amy Cavalier and I am going to be facilitating this session for everyone. A few housekeeping items before we begin. Um, handouts for the sessions are available at the Patent Literacy Symposium um, webpage, which are housed on Schoology. The session handouts are within the folder for today, June 10th, in this time slot and under the name of ECRI Successful Implementation. Our session today will be 75 minutes long and it is going to be recorded. Um, the chat feature for today is going to be off between participants, but you will be able to chat with us if you have any needs. Please keep your video feature off and mute yourself to eliminate any potential distractions to the presentation. Um, if you have any questions as we go through, again, please put them in the chat and I will be happy to share those with the team. Uh, we would love for you to tweet out or share on social media all that you are learning from today's symposium. The hashtag for the Patent Literacy Symposium is hashtag PA Lit Symposium 2020. Today we are joined by our EPRI team from the Mifflinburg School District. Um, we have several members. First, we have Mrs. Karen Schaefer. Karen has spent the last four years serving as the principal of Mifflinburg Elementary and has over 15 years of education experience, and she will be retiring at the end of June. We have Mrs. Anita Ocker. She has received her bachelor's degree in elementary education in 2005 and her master's degree in curriculum and instruction um, in administration from Bloomsburg University and she has been a first grade teacher for the past 14 years. We have Mrs. Lindsay Black, or I'm sorry, Mrs. Lindsay Beck, please excuse me. Lindsay received her bachelor's degree in elementary education from, Bloom, from Bloomsburg University and a master's in reading from Loyola, Loyola University. She's taught fourth grade and was a Title I reading specialist and has spent the last 15 years in Mifflinburg Area School District as the Title I and Reading Recovery Teacher, first grade teacher, and is currently serving as the first grade reading interventionist. Mrs. Ashley Thurman is a kindergarten teacher at Mifflinburg Elementary. She received her bachelor's degree from Wilson College, and she has a master's degree from the Eastern Mennonite, um, focusing in curriculum and instruction. Um, Mr. James Case is um, the new principal at Mifflinburg um, Area School District. He pre previously served as the elementary principal in Warren, PA. And we also have Mrs. Mary Young with us today. She received her bachelor's degree in elementary education from Loyola University and a master's degree in reading from Bloomsburg University. She's been teaching in Mifflinburg Area School District for 24 years. Mary has taught first, second, and fourth grades and is currently the kindergarten reading interventionist. So we wanna welcome our team today. And to, take, um, to begin our presentation, we're going to say hello to Karen to get us started. Hello, Karen. Karen? To, um, yeah, can you hear me? Um, I want to thank you all for um, joining us today and learning about our journey into implementing enhanced core reading instruction, better known as ECRI, <clears throat> into all of our classrooms in our K-2 building. Mifflinburg Elementary School is the only elementary school in the Mifflinburg Area School District, and it is a K-2 building with a population of approximately 470 students. Of this population, 42% are considered economically disadvantaged, and we have approximately 13% of our students in the special ed programs. Since we're a K-2 building, we don't really use any PSSA data. However, we do use Acadians, which is a, a formerly doubles next, and we also <clears throat> use data from measures of academic progress, or MAP. We currently use the Wonders Reading Series, 
And in addition to implementing ECRI, we've also impl implemented the use of Hegarty, which is a daily phonemic awareness program. ECRI and Hegarty are considered our tier one or universal classroom interventions at Mifflinburg. Our vision at Mifflinburg Elementary School is that all learners can achieve academic success through targeted and research-based instructional practices and interventions. Our ultimate goal is to end the phrase, these kids can't read, as our students move up through the grades in Mifflinburg Area School District. We began our ECRI implementation journey probably about a year and a half, two years ago. And to achieve this vision of having all kids proficient at reading, we created a coaches team, which is now the model for our district. And our coaches team is comprised of classroom teachers and reading interventionists from each grade level. Now that you know a little bit about Mifflinburg, let me share with you a little bit about our presenters today. The teachers you're going to meet are an ardent group of educators who realized at the beginning the potential ECRI could have on improving the reading skills of all of our students, not just some of our students, but all of our students. Their passion for and belief in improving the reading instruction was the catalyst for change in our building. It changed the way we looked at, at instruction across curric the curriculum. As you will see during their presentation, the teacher's dedication, persistence, and strong work ethics are the reason we have 100% faculty buy-in, and every single classroom teacher has implemented ECRI with fidelity. But more importantly, their dedication is the reason why all of our students have experienced success, even though our school year was cut short. So without further ado, it is with great pride and admiration that I introduce to you a few of the members of our ECRI coaches team. First, we have Anita Auker. She is our lead coach and a first grade teacher. She's gone above and beyond to inspire and lead all of the coaches. We have Lindsay Beck, a first grade reading interventionist and also the first grade coach. She is passionate beyond belief and will go above and beyond to help her students. In fact, she even went to a student's home in the fall in order to do benchmarking. We have Mrs. Mary Young, a, the kindergarten reading interventionist as well as coach. She put together a series of videos and was one of the first coaches to initiate Monday morning meetings to preview what the ECRI routines would be coming up. Finally, we have Ashley Furman. She's an exemplary kindergarten teacher and kindergarten coach. Ashley is gifted at organizing and her passion for making her students successful is a, it, there's no one else like her. I admire her greatly. Also joining us is Mr. Case. He is the incoming principal who, who will be taking my place here in the next few weeks when I retire. And we also have Mrs. Kim Mice, who is our IU consultant. And now I'm sure you don't want to hear any more from me, so I will turn it over to Anita Auker and the Mifflinburg Elementary ECRI coaches. Thank you. All right, hello everybody. Um, we're excited to be here with you today. Looks a little different virtually than what we thought it would be. But our presentation's purpose isn't really to explain ECRI, but instead to share our district's adoption and implementation of ECRI. So we're gonna start off with this little video collage of sorts of ECRI snapshots. You're going to practice blending sounds to read these words. Blend. Mm -hmm. oh. Word. Mom. Blend. Oh. Word. Oh. 
Blend. Pot. Word. Pot. Blend. Mm. My turn. Watch me blend this word. Mm. And. Your turn. Blend. Blending sounds to make words. M a m. Mom. Up. Top. Ot. Pot. All right, we ready? Okay. Yeah. You're going to practice words using say it, spell it, say it. My turn. Word under. Your turn. Word under. under. Spell under. Alrighty, so that was just a brief little snapshot. Um, like I said, we aren't going into the necessarily the nitty gritty of ECRI, but we're gonna move on to the path that Mifflinburg Area School District took to implement ECRI. So this whole thing started for us with the MTSS training series through Patton um, in the 2018-19 school year. From there, we went on to ECRI training, and everything that's on this slide will be presented more in detail in the upcoming slides. Um, so we had our ECRI training in January and April of 2019. Then that summer, we had um, Carol Disson from ECRI come. Then we had our kindergarten teachers become part of the ECRI training through Patton. We continued on with coaches meeting and attending vocab and comprehension training. And as you can see, of course, we continued with monthly meetings, monthly school-wide goals, and we had a site visit from Carol um, last year in January. So when we break these steps down, we go to um, September of 2018. Now, when we went to Patton for this MTSS conference, we had a group assembled. We had K-2 teachers, had a reading specialist, a learning support teacher, a speech pathologist, our curriculum director was with us, school psychologist, and our principal. So we went with the intent that we were trying to gain more knowledge, see what we could do to improve. So, in Mifflinburg, we were really lacking a true system of tiered interventions. We've had Title I reading support as our main intervention for a very long time. We knew that we needed to boost, make our core more robust. We were looking for something um, explicit and something that we could implement school-wide with fidelity. Carol Disson was one of the presenters and she presented ECRI one of those 
days while we were at Patton. And it really, it just sparked that huge interest. And we were like, wow, that really sounds like something that, that we should look up, find more information on. So while at the Patton um, Conference for MTSS, we received a grant for ECRI training. So like all of our ducks were in a roll. We just had everything we needed to move forward. So of course our goal was to become 100% with, attain 100% proficiency on the DIVLS benchmark K to two. So that's what we were shooting for. Then we move right on to um, January. And between January and April, we had a smaller team, two teachers for each grade, kindergarten through two, and two reading specialists. And we followed through with the ECRI training in January and April. Now this was pretty informal because we all didn't have, we didn't have our school-wide training. So we did as much as we could on our own, collaborating with each other, lots of conversations in the hallway, at lunch, to put into place ECRI, um, to get our feet wet with it, and to see how we could continue. So we developed PowerPoints uh, for ECRI to insert into our Wonders core reading instruction. We used the pyramid um, from top to bottom and slowly added the routines as we felt comfortable, which, as you know, whenever we start something new, there's a lot of challenges. You have to get your feet wet. The comfort level is not always there. So it was definitely a work in progress for this small group of teachers that went to this training and, and tried to implement it. So we were each other's best cheerleaders. Um, we spent a lot of time, but we really were enjoying, liking, and seeing the benefit of ECRI already. Um, we were excited, and we couldn't really wait for the next step of trying to get more teachers on board. That moves us right to April, where we return to Patton and our, our ECRI training to have our last day, which uh, concentrated on vocabulary and comprehension. Now, as with anything new, this small group was getting more familiar, but we recognized that moving forward to share all of this information with our staff, it's always best to bring in the guru when you can. So we were super excited when we were able to invite Carol to our district to do uh, our school-wide training in July of 19. Uh, we did open up the opportunity to some neighboring school districts and one joined us. Um, so we were able to make it a multi-district training, which I think was really beneficial for both districts. So that was a brief how we jumped into ECRI and then Ashley's gonna take us forward into how we develop ECRI as a school-wide implementation. Good afternoon. So picking up where Lindsay's left off, um, in July of 2019, our Mifflinburg team became a cohort and we were able to send additional um, staff to Patton to receive the training explicitly from Carol. We got notification. And this was through a program that our kindergarten teachers, as well as our kindergarten reading interventionists, would be allowed to go back and have that nitty gritty um, pattern uh, experience of learning ECRI. Now, we also decided with partnership through the neighboring school district to hold a two day ECRI training, and we had it here in district with our neighboring school district coming in we had the opportunity to invite all K to two teachers as well as our Title I interventionists and our Title I paraprofessionals. And we were trained on the foundational skills of ECRI. The neighboring school district also came, they sent roughly 10 people. Um, so it was not their full 
faculty, but at least this way, our staff was able to partner with them for budgetary reasons. The school-wide implementation um, was our goal for our 2019-2020 school year. We decided that there needed to be a coaches team to kind of foster this program and to carry on as we develop our ECRI. We took our initial group of teachers that were sent to Patton in January of 2019, and those two kindergarten teachers, two first grade teachers, two second grade teachers, and our two reading intervention teachers really developed into being our coaches team. And through this, we have had some shuffling where one of the first grade teachers went to a reading interventionist, as well as bringing in our curriculum director and our IU consultant. In August of the school year prior to starting, our coaches team met and we developed a rollout calendar for the implementation of our routines for each grade level. This allowed us to have consistency and allowed us to be able to not only collaborate when needed, but also had a structure point for our tier two intervention teacher to know that no matter what student she was working with, we were consistently on the same lessons. We also were able to bring in a superintendent and an elementary principal from Susquehanna Community School District to share with them our successes that we had just as our adoption team really worked through at the end of the spring of the 2018-2019 school year. Um, on the right hand of your screen, you will see an ECRI implementation schedule for our grades one and two. You can see that we split it up and we rolled it out. Our kindergarten implementation schedule looked a little bit differently as we understood that most of these children, this was their first time coming to school and getting used to the school scenery. So the rollouts were a little bit different across grade levels, but within that six weeks, we had rolled out all of our routines for each grade level. In September, our coaches decided that we needed to hold monthly meetings for the entire year. So we planned our dates for September through May, as well as we really started to build our foundation or our foundation of how we needed to support our staff and support our program to make it a success. So we had monthly meetings, which were held 30 minutes prior to the start of the school day. We came in just a little bit before our contracted time, but it wasn't anything out of the ordinary. And we looked at those meetings, we created agendas, so we all were prepared with what topics need to be discussed for the month. And then we also looked at our reevaluation of the rollout plan, what worked, and we adjusted our schedule as necessary if we found we needed more time depending on um, the circumstances. This next slide is an example of what our agenda actually looked like once it was filled in. You will see that there's notes there and it said um, how we were progressing for the year, things we wanted to roll out, gave timeframes, and this just ensured that we were able to really be consistent across grade levels, consistent among our teachers in each grade level, as well as across K to two, and it kind of kept everybody in the loop. Um, one of the things you will hear coming up is we talked about how we were going to implement data collections and those decisions were made during these coaching meetings. Um, again, at these meetings, we had our direct, director of curriculum, our IU uh, consultant, as well as our representations from K to two. In September, after we had started our school year, our core group of coaches decided that we were going to offer the service of having any teachers interested coming in to see models. We were willing to go into their classroom and model either a specific routine or the whole ECRI lesson for the day to them so they can kind of see it and feel that it can be manageable, one, with students and not just trained with adults, but also if they were having a specific issue we could demonstrate and model it for them. Our coaches continued to have informal meetings with grade level teachers um, in kindergarten. We had one every Monday and it allowed us to 
preview our upcoming routines, review routines that we had done, ask specific questions, and then through those informal meetings, we were able to collaborate with other coaches across grade levels to see what they were doing and really just kind of put the nuts and bolts to hold a solid foundation for our ECRI program here at Mifflinburg. We also asked the teachers to create videos as well as coaches created videos for teachers to see. Um, one of the things that this allowed is we all know that our days are busy and packed full of lots of things and we're pulled in millions of different directions, but this kind of left them watch videos on their own time from people they know who might not have been able to practice it as long as Carol Diss and the Guru. So they kind of were able to see how it worked in play here at Mifflinburg. In October of 2019, at this point, all of our routines were implemented school-wide. We had gone through our whole rollout. We continued with our coaches meetings monthly and held formal monthly meetings as well as including staff during our faculty meetings. Informal meetings at grade levels were held for anybody who still wanted to continue with any assistance or if they had questions. Our coaches also returned to Pat and for a train the trainer. At this session in October, we sent one kindergarten teacher, one kindergarten reading interventionist, one first grade teacher, and one second grade teacher. And at this point, we had put in and we had found out that our Mifflinburg Elementary School had become the regional ECRI site for Patton. Hi, I'm Anita Auker, and um, I'm going to take you through the fall of this past school year um, and through the winter right up to our school closure. So um, as Ashley has just explained, through the summer and early fall of 2019, we really came up with our plan for rolling ECRI out and worked through making sure our faculty and staff was on board and we were all on the same page. Um, we got to the point in November where everybody should have been feeling fairly confident with ECRI and their routines. And at this point, we were hopeful that we had full buy-in and we were hopeful that everybody was feeling fairly confident and um, was using the routines as intended. Um, for these reasons, our principal had allowed us to take our November faculty meeting and devote it strictly to ECRI. Um, for this faculty meeting, this was really a pivotal moment for our teachers for buy-in because we still had a few teachers who weren't sure that ECRI was the right thing for us. Some teachers were thinking it was too much um, for small kiddos. Some teachers just weren't 100% sold on ECRI. So for this November faculty meeting, there were a couple of um, really goals that we had. One thing we really wanted to do was show our teachers how ECRI ran start to finish and how some of these tricky routines um, were very doable, even, even at the very beginning of the year. Um, for this reason, we created and shared our very own videos. As Ashley had mentioned, we had been stocking up some of our videos as we went so that they could, our teachers could see that we make mistakes too, and it's okay. And it's a little more relatable when you see your colleague doing it as opposed to the expert who isn't gonna make any mistakes. They were able to watch us and say, oh, okay, they, they made a little mistake here or there. It's okay. Here's how they recovered and here's how they moved on. Um, here's just a short clip of one of the videos that we shared at our faculty meeting. You're going to practice new affix cards. Suffix? Less. Meaning? Without. Suffix? Full. Meaning? Full of. Very good. You're going to practice reading affixes and saying their meaning. Suffix? Full. Meaning? Full of. Very nice. Suffix? Less. Meaning? Without. Good. Prefix? Read. Meaning? Again. Suffix? In. Meaning? Happening now. Waiting for all eyes. Suffix? Less. Meaning? Without. Suffix? Meaning? More than one. Suffix? Full. Meaning? Full of. Suffix the first step. Suffix? Full. Meaning? Less. 
second sound. Do. Suffix the third sound. Hey. Good. Cleaning. Happened before. Good. We're going to practice individual turns. Suffix. Mia. Mimi. Good. Prefix. Jada. Mimi. Good. Okay, so that was just a short little um, clip. That was one of the clips that we had shown our faculty and staff at our faculty meeting. The other thing we were able to do, we were able to show short clips like this of kindergarten routines straight through second grade. Um, this was a really powerful moment for us to show our staff the progression of the routines from kindergarten straight through second grade to see how they work from the very beginning basic routines all the way up to the multisyllabic um, routine. Um, so this was a really um, powerful moment and I think it was really a turning point for a lot of our staff. You're gonna practice. Another thing that we were able to do in November to um, help with those few people who still needed some buy-in was try to um, share with them something that Carol Disson had shared with us and explained to us in some of our trainings. Um, we use Wonders as our core reading program. And one thing that Carol was really good at doing while we were trained was to explain that ECRI is not in addition to our core program. Um, ECRI works with our core program and it replaces pieces of our core program. So we came up with this chart just to show a sample week of our Wonders program and showed which pieces of Wonders that we were going to be teaching through ECRI. So if you look at the first day, for example, in Wonders, our word work piece of fluency and sound spelling, um, that was covered with the sound spelling review in ECRI. You look on day one also, phonics, that was covered using our sound spelling card and our sound spelling card practice in our ECRI lesson. Um, our high frequency words in our day one of wonders was covered with our irregular word reading practice in our ECRI lesson. So if you look through the week of wonders and as teachers began to realize this was not in addition to what they were already doing, this was another piece that really helped with the buy-in for some of those folks who weren't totally sold. Our coaches team really tried to do a lot of the work for our teachers. We worked really hard to try to um, get as many materials ready for them as possible so that when we rolled this out for the 1920 school year, the teachers didn't really have to do much except teach. Um, so right here, you'll see an example. Another thing our teachers, our coaches team did for our teachers was create and share, um, we called them cheat sheets for our equity lessons. So if you see right here on the right hand side of your screen, this is an example of the kindergarten um, cheat sheet and it listed the routine. It gave them the objective that they needed to state. Um, it would tell them the wait time, if there was a wait time that they needed, told them the cue, and it also told them the error correction. Um, a lot of our teachers found this to be very helpful instead of flipping through their manual or trying to memorize what they needed to do when there was an error. Sometimes there's a, a difference in wait time. Sometimes you have a two second wait time. Sometimes you don't have a wait time. Um, and as they were learning, the feedback we got was that it was overwhelming. So this was something else that we put in place to try to alleviate some of the frustration or anxiety teachers are feeling. Um, and it proved to be very helpful in alleviating some of the stress teachers were feeling. November was a big month for us. Um, we also began talking about implementation data collection. Up until this point, we knew we were going to implement the program. We were hoping we had 100% buy-in. That was definitely a goal of ours. 
Um, but most importantly, we needed to know that ECRI was being implemented with fidelity in order to achieve the results that we ultimately need. So we created a calendar for a monthly focus. Um, we didn't do any of this in the fall while teachers were still learning. We decided we would begin looking at collecting data on our implementation beginning in January. There were a few reasons for this, uh, but one of the major reasons was that we knew we would have Carol Disson and Patton coming back to us in January for a site visit to check how we were doing. Um, so we wanted to make sure that what the coaches were helping teachers with and showing them and modeling, we wanted to make sure that was really tight and we were doing everything properly um, before we went in and collected data on other teachers. So beginning in January, the focus for data collection, we were looking for a teacher explanation and appropriate signals. Um, again, this was, uh, we, the cheat sheets we had handed out aided teachers with this in case they got flustered when um, the administrator came in, they could have that right in their hand, make sure that they were using the correct words and make sure that their focus cue, think time and signal was really um, appropriate and correct. In February, our goal for data collection was going to be student response and checks for understanding. So when they went in, they wanted to see, were we doing individual turns? Were students on task? Were they participating? Did you have those blurters? And was that being ignored or was that um, given attention? All of those types of things we were going to be looking for. In March, we were focusing on error corrections and error part firming. So my turn, your turn, go back to and continue. May, or April and May, I'm sorry, was the time we were going to really focus on our small group time and our use of decodables. Um, and we were going to be looking at collecting data on how that routine was going. So really, from January through May, we had hoped to collect data in all of our classrooms on every single routine. The way we planned to collect this data was to use a form that we had created, and you'll see that on the right of your screen as well. And because of some of the feedback we had been getting from our teachers, we wanted it to be as non-threatening as possible, and we really didn't want it to feel evaluative at all. We wanted it really to be a tool for providing feedback. For those reasons, um, we decided to create the chart, as you'll see here. And when um, our principal or our IU consultant was coming in to collect the data and watch lessons, they were looking for specific, specific pieces, as you saw on the chart before, um, before this, depending on the month, depended on which routine they were looking for. If they had it there and it was present and it was um, appropriate, they got a check. If there was something that needed fixed up, they just put a, a little R in that box, noting that something needed to be refined. Maybe the wait time was a little off, maybe they skipped something. Um, and then a slash for not observed. This was really helpful in providing feedback to our teachers and ultimately it did achieve our goal. Um, teachers really did take this information as feedback and they didn't feel like they were being evaluated. Um, this helped us pre prepare for our fidelity check also when Carol came and Patton came. December is always a busy month in the elementary school um, for these reasons and because we were still working through um, implementation and everything. December was a time for teachers to reflect upon how they had been doing in their classroom and they were encouraged to videotape themselves and reflect on their lesson. If necessary, watch their lesson and then watch a coach's lesson and see if there was any differences or similarities 
um, and practice collecting data on themselves. A lot of teachers did take advantage of this and a lot of them as a result had increased confidence. Okay, January of 2020, we had our site visit, our first site visit from Carol Disson and Patton. We also had several other school districts with us that day visiting and observing in our classrooms. But the major highlight of this visit was um, Carol Disson came into our classrooms and collected data on all of our coaches delivering ECRI lessons within, the within their own classrooms. She was able to share the feedback, not with just the coach that she collected the data on, but our whole entire team. So we got a lot of good feedback, a lot of data, and um, just a lot that we could move forward with. Um, not only letting us know that we were doing things right, but areas where we could tighten some things up. Our team then returned back to Patton for some additional ECRI training. The kindergarten team that had become the cohort, they returned for um, additional days of training in grades one and two, we're able to send some more teachers back to be trained in the vocab and comprehension pieces of ECRI. Our coaches team, our full coaches team, also returned to Patton for an additional day of Train the Trainer in January. All right. Um, February and March were, we were getting right into the swing of our data collection. Um, our principal, Mrs. Schaefer, and our IU literacy consultant, Kim Mice, they made schedules and were in classrooms collecting data using our um, data collection form that we had created. And after they had been in classrooms across the whole grade level, they compiled all their data and all of their feedback and all of their notes, and they would send out um, like a synopsis of what they had seen in all the classrooms. This feedback um, showed common strengths that they saw amongst classrooms, and it also showed areas where maybe we were lacking a little and some areas that we could tighten up or improve upon. Um, our coaches continued this whole time with informal meetings with our grade levels and Partway through the year, a lot of um, routines, some teams, some routines were let go and new routines had popped up. So there was that continual um, conversations going on, explaining and helping teachers work through those things. All right, now I am going to turn this over to Mary Young, our interventionist. Okay. Hi everyone, um, I am going to request control of Anita's screen so that as we get to some slides on data, I can be in control here. So hopefully this works. Okay, um, so as Anita mentioned, during um, the month of March, COVID came along and really without any warning, we were, as a faculty, trying to decide how we would continue, as all of you did, how we would continue to reach our students. Um, so the intervention teams decided to record some ECRI lessons that we could push out to our students, all of our students, not just intervention students, but K through two, to continue with what they had been doing for the past seven months. Um, we did three lessons a week and we would send those to the regular classroom teachers who then used their methods of communication to push them out to their students as well as posting them on our district website. One of the things when we show the video you will notice is it was a struggle to decide how we would do it without students in front of us because as you saw um, the student responses are a big part of the ECRI routines. Um, you rely on that to, for your feedback and to know, okay, did I need to make a lot of error corrections on this routine? 
okay, those kids, I, I may need to pull them in a small group if they were not successful with this routine. So it was really challenging to do the ECRI routines without your kids in front of you. So we had to adapt as everyone did during the shutdown. So you will notice in the videos that there is no error correction and we had to use the technology available to us. So for example, here at school, we have a smart board that we can show um, rows and rows of words at a time. But when we did it at home through Zoom, uh, we had to adapt. So I would hold my, my iPad up and I would um, show only one word at a time. When you are trained in ECRI, you learn that um, Carol prefers, th the reason ECRI uses rows and rows of words is because um, you want, number one, when they make errors, you have to go back to, you take it out of their memory and go back to, but also to build that um, stamina and endurance of looking at several words at once. But again, we were limited by the technology we have. So I will show you um, samples of the kindergarten and first grade uh, ECRI videos that were pushed out during the shutdown. Oh, hang on one second. You might wanna. There we go. Okay. My turn. Word good. Your turn. Word. Spell good. Word. My turn. Word come. Oops. <laughs> Your turn. Word. Spell come. Word. E. B, E, we, eat, heat, here we go, sound, mm, long sound, E, blend, word, me, you probably knew that one without even having to blend it, suffix, meaning used to compare more than two things. Er, your turn. Suffix meaning used to compare two things. Good. My turn. Suffix est meaning or I'm sorry, your turn. Suffix meaning used to compare more than two things. Your turn, meaning? Used to compare more than two things. Nice job. Okay. So now on to a slide about data. As teachers, data drives our instruction. It's how we make decisions in the classroom. So um, due to COVID pandemic, we obviously do not have our end of year data. Um, so we also recognize that in the first year of implementation, it, it takes several years to see an impact, but our results are really promising even after only really seven months of implementing ECRI school-wide. So what we decided to take a look at is on the Acadians, the nonsense word fluency, whole words read subtest. Um, and we're gonna compare mid-year from 2018-19 to mid-year 2019-20. And the reason we took a look at this subtest of the Acadians benchmark is because um, research that came out of the University of Oregon Center for Teaching and Learning showed that um, students who read sound by sound and are not attempting to unitize 
are highly unlikely to reach that oral reading fluency goal. So for example, if you're thinking about a nonsense word like bop, students who go sound by sound, b, a, k, or even if they go sound by sound and recode, b, a, k, bop, those students were highly unlikely to reach their ORF goal, okay? But students who were able to partial blend or read the word as whole units, those students were doing some form of unitization, were benchmarked at the oral reading fluency in first grade. So we understood the importance of getting our kids to read those whole words. So if you take a look at this graph, okay, in order to read this and trying to figure out how to best represent this for you because Acadience does not generate this type of report. So we went through manually and looked at every student in kindergarten last year, middle of year, versus every student this year, middle of the year. And here's what we learned. Last year, so if you look at the blue bar graph right here, this is showing that in 2018-19, in January. So that was really before we implemented ECRI at all. 65% of our kids could not read one whole word. They were reading zero. So if you think about the, the flip side of that, that means 35% of our kids could read one or more words. What's very interesting is that that flip-flops, and if you look at the orange bar right next to it, this January, only, and I don't want to say only, but only 36% of our kids were reading zero words. That means 64% of our kids could read more than one word. So um, we flip-flopped it. Okay. Um, if we keep going to looking at the graph, um, at, you'll see as the, if you look at the numbers across the bottom, those are the numbers of whole words read. So you can see here that if you look at the blue bars in the year 2018-19, before we had implemented ECRI, most of our kids were in the lower side here. So like we said, 65% were not reading any whole words. We had some reading one, two, three, four, and even all the way, some stragglers up here in the high end, okay? But what I hope you do notice is that in the orange bars, when you look at the orange bars, so by this January, look at how many more kids were reading whole words. Um, if we just take a look right here at the number eight, Okay, eight is the expected benchmark for the middle of the year first grade. Okay, well here we are middle of the year kindergarten. And at that time, we had 12, this year, we had 12 kindergarten students who, who were at the, really the first grade middle of year benchmark. That was about 9.5% of, um, of our kindergarten grade level, okay? Um, if you really look from that point on, so if you're looking at from eight upward, in, all, in our 2018-19 school year, so looking at the blue bars, we only had 10 students that were really that far ahead, eight or more whole words read. That was about 6% of our class. This January, even after just a few months of ECRI, we had 57 students who were reading eight or more whole words. That is 45% of our kindergarten class this year. So um, again, we recognize that we're new. Um, we haven't even had a full year of implementing ECRI school-wide, but this right here, this shift um, is really, in I think a few years going to show big gains for our students because as we said, it's in getting kids to, to unitize 
that's where we're going to see the growth in their oral reading fluency. And that's, that's our goal. So, so hopefully that data, we'd be, um, we're really excited to track the data now and from year to year, see how that data grows, see how that data changes. And that too will be part of all of our decision-making processes as this coaches team moves forward. Why does it keep Okay. So, there it is. On to lessons learned. I think the biggest thing, if, if your school is looking to implement ECRI, and if you've listened to some of the sessions here throughout this literacy symposium, or even attended this, the trainings through Patton, our biggest takeaway is that um, patience is the key. And from, from top down, patience by administration. And our principal, Mrs. Schaefer, um, was very patient with it, how we unrolled this and how we as a faculty decided to pursue this. Recognizing that everyone has different levels of comfort not just think about when you, if you've had children they don't all learn to walk at the same time they don't all learn to you know be potty trained at the same time and and we're the same way we pick things up at different paces and so it's really important to to be patient with everyone involved and allow people to grow and develop that comfort at their own pace we as coaches had to be patient um we we try to be resources. We try to always be there to answer questions, but we too also had many questions along the way. Um, sometimes in the middle of a lesson going, oh, oh, what do, what do I do here? And so um, we had to reach out to each other and be open, um, have an open door at all times to allow people in so that we could best help everyone else. And so that was a big part. And then our teachers and students had to be patient throughout the process as well. I want to go back to something Anita talked about when we did collected implementation data. If you look at our next bullet point here, do not acknowledge poor student behavior. And Carol uses a great analogy when she's training and she says, you want to be that non-payout slot machine. And so to tie this into the patient's part of it, um, whether the ECRI routines has a tap, or if it um, has you sliding your finger, you're always going to have that student or maybe multiple, they, they wanna blurt it out before everyone else to show off that they know it, or they wanna say it slower than everyone else. And so she really, really stresses that you don't wanna pay out that negative behavior. And so um, it takes some patience, even after you know 10 times, Johnny is still blurting out ahead of everyone else. You have to continue to be that non-payout with, wait for the tap, wait for the slide, and really not giving any kind of emotion um, back to that student. But So those were, would probably be our um, biggest lessons learned and um, passing that along to our, our team. Uh, professional learning community no matter what, ECRI or whatever it is your school is pursuing, um, is, is always a need. And we recognized that we needed to be dedicated to ECRI, its implementation, um, maintaining fidelity, training, and always being available to train. And so that led us to really, um, all year long, continue professional development as necessary from simple things like the physical setup of the classroom, where, you're, where you would do your equity routines, how the students would sit, materials you would need to have ready nearby. Um, so again, oh, that took allowing teachers to see other teachers, visit other classrooms, how they had it set up, how they might have displayed sound cards or AFIX cards. It also was a lot of shared responsibilities um, so that one person is not overwhelmed. Everybody played a part. And as we alluded to earlier, the coaches team really tried to do all the heavy work. And we'll talk a little bit more about that on the next slide. And 
collaboration is key um, between the interventionists, the classroom teachers, the coaches, talking about um, how it was going because we all know um, when you receive training and, and you do it on your own, you practice or as we did, we practice with each other adults, it's, it looks different when you do it in front of five-year-olds and six-year-olds and you might see some different things. So that collaboration and constant dialogue about how we could problem solve and troubleshoot different issues that would come up. Um, we also learned that having that library of videos has been really beneficial, um, not just for last year, um, but thinking about this upcoming year. We've kind of been for the last three, four months and now looking into summer, we haven't been using the equity routines daily like we were. So we all, coaches included, we all will need that refresher. And so we have something that we can go back to for anyone at any time. When new teachers are hired, they are there for resources. Um, as we are an ECRI um, training site for Patton, regional site, this is also a great way when, when we have visitors looking to learn more about ECRI that they can see it in action. And so if you are looking at or deciding to imp implement ECRI, um, slow and steady wins the race and we really just were patient and, and took our time. Um, so again, to come back to that coach's team, and again, if, if you are thinking about implementing ECRI, the coach's team has been invaluable. Um, the heavy work that they have done, we've developed the materials so that um, teachers just had to focus on the delivery of the routines. They didn't have to make anything, create anything, photocopy anything, you know, it was all done for them. They just had to focus on what they were saying, what their cues were, their signals, and how to correct. So we took the bulk of the work off of them and we put it on ourselves as the coaches team because we, we believed that strongly in ECRI and we were willing to do that work. Um, allowing everyone to get their aha moment is crucial. And in the next slide, you're gonna see some videos. As with anything, um, not everyone is on board at the same time and we definitely did we're not going to paint a, a you know everything was rosy picture we definitely had um teachers who were not as excited who were not as um who just didn't believe that this really was going to give us the results we needed and you really can't force that or push that it really comes to them when they see their students being successful. And so um, you'll see that in one of the videos of one of our teachers kind of commenting about their first perceptions of ECRI and then what they, what they came to realize as they did it for an extended time with their students. Um, if you think back to one of the slides that Anita showed earlier, when teachers understand that this is not just one more thing they have to do, okay, it's, it's, um, it's not in addition to, but it replaces many things. And so, you know, we all know uh, time is valuable. There never seems to be enough time in our day to do all the things we want to do, need to do. And so this, um, this mindset that this isn't one more thing, this is going to alleviate that stress because it's replacing um, other things. So the coaches team was also the, the ones who would always be um, aware of what was coming up. We made it our job, our responsibility to always be ahead of the game and look at what was coming up so we could if we had to call an informal meeting or send out that grade level email, say, okay, when you get to this lesson, be aware of this. Simple example, you know, in um, kindergarten, maybe it was when we got to the, we introduced the letter X, okay? And making sure that when we were segmenting the sounds, maybe the word was box, the uh, that we were separating that into the two sounds and okay, heads up everybody, make sure you don't wanna use that as one sound. And so little things like that, we took it upon ourselves to make sure that we did, okay? So 
And we also try to be flexible, always being flexible to allow people to visit. So on to the videos of what our teachers think right, and how it has changed them. None of these teachers are on the coaching team, just so you are aware. So this is what they, this is, um, you know, what ECRI meant to them and how it changed them. So if I click it, oh, there we go. Go ahead. I've been teaching kindergarten for about almost 30 years, and I have to say that I was very skeptical of the. Hang on one second. We're not sure if you can hear that. We're not sure if you can hear the volume from our screen. We can hear it. It's Amy program because I thought that the repetition and right, so now we're going to go back to program. Anita so that and she can pleasantly surprised that they are doing amazing play the video They're further ahead than they've ever been before that I've ever taught kindergarten I'm shocked at how well they are reading their uh, letter recognition their sight words are spot We can hear your videos. Okay, here we go. Right on. They know exactly what to do. When they come to a word in a book, they know how to blend the letters. They know how to read the book. They are practicing fluency. They're practicing reading without even making mistakes. And I am so impressed with the program. And I was not sure it was going to work. And I have to. I've been teaching kindergarten for about almost 30 years, and I have to say that I was very skeptical of the program because I thought that the repetition and was too much for kindergarten, but I'm pleasantly surprised that they are doing amazing. They're further ahead than they've ever been before that I've ever taught kindergarten. I'm shocked at how well they are reading. Their uh, letter recognition, their sight words are spot on. They know exactly what to do. When they come to a word in a book, they know how to blend the letters. They know how to read the book. They are practicing fluency. They're practicing reading without even making mistakes. And I am so impressed with the program and I was not sure it was gonna work. And I have to Hi, I'm Michelle Zimmerman. I've been teaching for over 20 years. And what I like about ECRI is that all of the pieces seem to fit together like a puzzle. The students um, at this point in time of the year, at the end of first grade versus the beginning of first grade, everything's starting to flow together. And they're having those moments where, wow, I am reading these really big words. ECRI is one of my favorite things to teach. I think it's because of the difference between what we used to do on phonics instruction compared to what we do now. And it might be that aha moment that I finally think, hey, the kids are really getting it. Um, so it gives you that, that feel good moment. Okay, so moving forward, um, shut down or not, we did not meet our goals for March through May. But whether, like I said, shut down or not, we would always need to create new goals and focus on new areas in order to maintain our fidelity and move forward with the implementation. So same as we did last year, we're going to meet again and we're going to develop new monthly goals for each month of the school year, picking up where we left off this year, adding new goals, continually um, working on professional development with ECRI and participating in ECRI um, intervention training when it becomes available, hopefully getting more of our paraprofessionals trained in ECRI so that if they're working with small groups of students or individual students, they know the same routines that we are teaching and can maintain that fidelity. Um, and unfortunately, if necessary, develop that plan so that if and when remote learning has to happen, at any point in the upcoming school year, we're prepared for it this time and we know how we're going to continue to 
use the routines of ECRI remotely. So with that being said, our presentation is finished. And if there are any questions or through the chat, um, we will go on to that. Hi, we did have one question. Um, one of the questions was, what did you find, what did your team find to be the most challenging piece for making the change um, to ECRI? I'm trying to, there we go. There's Anita, hi. hi. Um, so most definitely our biggest challenge was teacher buy-in. The transition into teaching the routines, ECRI is very explicit and it is very, um, it's very simple to follow because it tells you exactly what you are to say. It tells you exactly how to correct mistakes. It, it lays you it lays out a roadmap for you exactly how you're supposed to do it. But it was the teacher buy-in that was our biggest hurdle and our biggest struggle. Um, when you have some teachers who have been teaching for 20, 30 years, and they've seen a lot of programs come and go, and that was a really big hurdle for us to help people understand ECRI is not a program. ECRI is the methodology in which we are delivering our content. That was our biggest hurdle to kind of shift that mindset and help people understand and realize it's not a program. It's not something that's here today and gone tomorrow, but rather the methodology and the delivery of our instruction. All right, thank you so much, Anita. And if the rest of the team would just turn their video on, we wanna say thank you um, to the Mifflinburg team. Um, you did a wonderful job. Um, and we want to thank everyone who attended this session. A reminder, the session uh, was recorded and will be available on the Patton YouTube channel. Um, the literacy team will be creating supports aligned to the, the presentations at the symposium to maximize um, learning for families and educators. Um,